We're back with more tributes here on American Legends Losses. Today, we honor American legends who have sadly passed away recently. These remarkable individuals made significant contributions to their fields, whether in entertainment, politics, sports, or public service, and have left lasting legacies that touched countless lives. As we remember their incredible journeys, we extend our heartfelt condolences to their families, friends, and fans. While they may no longer be with us, their memories and impact will live on forever. Before we continue, if this video or the legacies of these individuals have touched your life, please consider giving it a thumbs up as a sign of respect. Thank you for your support. Marissa Grace Haik was a prominent Indonesian actress and politician known for her rich cultural heritage, which combined Maduris, Dutch, Pakistani, and French roots. Born on October 15, 1962 in Balikpapan, Indonesia, she made significant contributions to Indonesian cinema and politics. As the eldest member of the Haik family, Marissa paved the way for her younger siblings, Soraya Haik, a well-known Indonesian model and actor, and Shanaz Haq, a television actor and presenter. Growing up in a multicultural household, Marissa embraced the diversity that shaped her identity, and it greatly influenced her career choices in public persona. Marissa began her career as an actress, quickly becoming a household name in Indonesia due to her captivating performances in films and television. Her talent, beauty, and charisma resonated with audiences, making her one of the most beloved figures in the entertainment industry. Her popularity opened doors to other ventures, including her foray into politics. Marissa's dedication to social causes and her desire to make a difference in society inspired her to enter the political arena, where she served as a respected public figure an advocate for numerous initiatives aimed at improving the lives of Indonesians. Throughout her life, Marissa was deeply connected to her heritage, and she proudly represented her diverse background. Her ability to navigate multiple identities allowed her to reach a broad spectrum of people, fostering unity and understanding within the community she served. As a public figure, she remained committed to promoting tolerance, cultural pride, and social justice, both in her professional work and personal life. On October 2, 2024, Marissa Grace Heck passed away at the age of 61. Her death marked the end of an era for Indonesian entertainment and politics. She leaves behind a lasting legacy through her contributions to film, television, and public service as well as the inspiration she provided to her family and countless admirers across the nation. Irina Glazunova, a 27-year-old Russian TikToker, tragically passed away after a fatal accident while filming content for her social media in Tbilisi, Georgia. The incident occurred as Glazunova, known for her engaging and vibrant presence on TikTok, was recording a video with a friend while exploring the city. Reports indicate that while walking through a subway station, she lost her balance and fell down a flight of stairs, an event that was captured on camera as part of her recording. Glazanova had gained popularity on social media for sharing snippets of her life, creative content, and entertaining videos. Her tragic accident has sent shockwaves through her fan base and the broader TikTok community, where she was known for her positivity and lighthearted posts. At just 27 years old, Glazanova's sudden death has sparked discussions about the safety of creating content in public spaces, particularly in situations where the focus on filming can sometimes distract from the immediate surroundings. The heartbreaking event underscores the unpredictable dangers that can arise in everyday activities. Glazanova's tragic fall occurred during a moment of routine filming, something she likely did many times before without incident. The loss of her life in such an unexpected manner has deeply affected her followers, friends, and family. 
many of whom have taken to social media to express their grief and pay tribute to her. This incident also serves as a somber reminder of the potential risks associated with filming in public spaces, particularly when attention is divided between recording and navigating one's environment. Irina Glazunova's death has cast a shadow over her vibrant online presence, with fans mourning the loss of a young content creator whose life was cut tragically short while doing what she loved. Dave Allison, the original guitarist for the cult thrash metal band Anvil, passed away at the age of 68 after battling cancer. A foundational member of the band, Allison played alongside frontman Steve Lips. Kudlow from 1981 to 1989, during which time Anvil solidified their place in the metal scene. His contributions to five of the band's studio albums, particularly Metal on Metal 1982 and Forged in Fire 1983, helped shape the band's distinctive sound. His final record with Anvil was the live album Past and Present Live in Concert in 1989, after which he parted ways with the band. Anvil shared a heartfelt statement on social media through the Vinyl Frontier Canada, expressing their sorrow we'd like to send our deepest condolences to the Allison family and friends. Dave passed away this morning. He was a close friend, and we will miss him. He was proud of his early contributions to Anvil, and his name and legacy live on. Rest in peace, Dave Squirrely Allison, both Kudlow and drummer Rob Reiner, also paid personal tributes. Kudlow wrote on social media, Rest in peace, Dave Allison, January 5th, 1956 to September 30th. 2024. We will miss you, brother Reiner, recounted a poignant visit to Allison's isolated cabin earlier in 2024, where he witnessed Allison's declining health. He shared the visit covered memories many and exposed his dire state. He was not well. Dot, dot, clearly together we planned a dinner that unfortunately never happened. R.I.P. My old friend Jeff Waters, guitarist for Anvil's Canadian Metal Contemporaries Annihilator, also honored Allison's legacy, reflecting on the impact he had on the Canadian metal scene. Waters commented, he sure left his mark on those classic records. Rip Dave. Thanks for your part in my mind and my music in April 2017. Allison briefly reunited with Anvil on stage in Peterborough, Ontario, where they performed classics like Metal on Metal Forged in Fire. And a cover of Born to be Wild, his legacy in metal will continue to resonate through his contributions to Anvil's early work and the lasting influence he had on fans and fellow musicians alike. Fritz Escovao, a pioneering figure in Brazilian music and founder of the iconic trio Mokoto, has passed away. The news of his death was confirmed via the group's Instagram account on Tuesday, October 1st, though the cause of death was not disclosed. Escovao, whose real name was Luis Carlos Fritz, left an indelible mark on samba rock a genre that fuses Samba's rhythmic foundation with the energy of rock music, thanks to his mastery of the cuica and his unique contributions as a singer, guitarist, pianist, and percussionist. Born in 1969, Trio Mokoto was co-founded by Escovao, along with Joel Parahaiba on drums and Nehru Gargalo on tambourine. The trio is credited with helping shape samba rock into a distinctive and vibrant musical style, with their work alongside Brazilian music legend Jorge Benjor cementing their place in the genre's history. Their performances with Benjor, particularly in the early 1970s, brought them widespread acclaim, and their collaborations, including on albums like Negro e Lindo, are considered classics in Brazilian music. Trio Mokoto became famous for their infectious swing and the intoxicating rhythm that embodied samba rock. Their signature sound not only propelled the band to fame, but also made samba rock an international sensation. Escovao was particularly celebrated for his vocal abilities, 
leading the group through hits like Now Adianta, and for being one of Brazil's greatest quick heroes, Cuca players, an instrument synonymous with Samba's rhythmic complexity. Escovao left Trio Makoto in 2003, and the Cuica role was later taken over by Scoa. His legacy, however, remains deeply ingrained in the history of Brazilian music. As the frontman of Trio Mokoto until 2002, he played a pivotal role in shaping the sound and soul of samba rock, ensuring that his contribution to the genre will be remembered for generations to come. Dabney Wharton Coleman was a versatile and acclaimed American actor known for his masterful portrayals of egotistical and often unlikable characters, particularly in comedic roles. Born on January 3, 1932, in Austin, Texas, Coleman built a remarkable career that spanned more than six decades, appearing in over 175 films and television programs. His unique ability to play sharp-tongued, self-centered characters made him a standout in Hollywood, and he became a beloved figure in both film and television. Coleman was celebrated for his range as an actor, receiving accolades for both comedic and dramatic performances. He delivered memorable roles in iconic films like 9 to 5 1980, where he played the chauvinistic boss Franklin Hart, and Tootsie 1982, as the condescending TV executive Ron Carlyle. These roles, among others, cemented his reputation for playing menacing but humorous characters who often found themselves the object of ridicule. Coleman's work in television was equally lauded, with standout performances in shows like Buffalo Bill and The Slap Maxwell Story, which earned him multiple Emmy nominations and a Golden Globe. Though Coleman was primarily known for his comedic roles, his talent for drama was also widely recognized. His nuanced performances brought depth to his characters, allowing audiences to connect with even the most unlikable figures. His career achievements were marked by a rare blend of versatility and consistency, earning him admiration from his peers and fans alike. Dabney Coleman passed away on May 16, 2024, at the age of 92 in Santa Monica, California. His death marked the end of a legendary career, but his contributions to film and television and his ability to make audiences laugh and think left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Coleman's legacy as a talented actor who could make the worst of characters irresistibly entertaining will continue to be celebrated for years to come. John Allen Amos Jr. was an esteemed American actor whose career spanned over five decades. Born on December 27, 1939, in Newark, New Jersey, he became widely known for his portrayal of significant and influential characters in television and film. Amos's most iconic roles include his performance as the adult Kunta Kinti in the groundbreaking miniseries Roots 1977, a portrayal that left a lasting cultural impact, and as James Evans' SR, the firm but loving father on the CBS television series Good Times 1974 to 1974 to 1976, where he became a symbol of resilience and strength in black families. Amos's ability to bring depth and sincerity to his characters made him a beloved figure in American television. His performance in Roots earned him critical acclaim, helping the miniseries to become a cultural phenomenon that shed light on the history of slavery in the United States. His role in Good Times further solidified his reputation as a talented actor who could portray both humor and serious drama, balancing fatherly warmth with authority. Beyond his most famous roles, Amos worked in a variety of television shows and films contributing to his extensive career. He was married twice, first to Noel J. Mickelson from 1965 to 1975, with whom he had two children, Shannon and K.C., Amos. Later, he married actress Lillian Lehman in 1978, though their marriage ended in 1979. 
John Amos passed away on August 21, 2024, in Los Angeles, California, at the age of 84. His legacy as a talented actor and a trailblazer in the entertainment industry remains deeply impactful, particularly for his contributions to portraying African-American experiences on screen. Gavin James Creel was an acclaimed American actor, singer, and songwriter who made a significant mark in the world of musical theater. Born on April 18, 1976, in Findlay, Ohio, Creel became widely recognized for his remarkable talents on stage, garnering numerous prestigious awards throughout his career. Known for his powerful voice and magnetic stage presence, Creel achieved notable success receiving a Grammy Award, Tony Award, Drama Desk Award, and a Laurence Olivier Award, solidifying his legacy as one of Broadway's leading performers. Creel was best known for his performances in hit Broadway productions, such as Thoroughly Modern Millie 2002, where he made his Broadway debut, earning a Tony nomination for Best Actor in a Musical. He continued to shine in productions like Hair 2009, which earned him his second Tony nomination, and Hello Dolly 2017, where he played Cornelius Hackle and won the Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. His portrayal of the role not only captivated audiences, but also earned him wide acclaim for his comedic timing and vocal prowess. In addition to his stage success, Creel contributed to musical theater through his work in the West End, where he won the Laurence Olivier Award for his role in the Book of Mormon. He also ventured into songwriting and released several albums showcasing his talents beyond acting. Gavin Creel passed away on September 30, 2024, in New York City at the age of 48. His extraordinary contributions to musical theater and his unforgettable performances on stage left an enduring legacy in the world of performing arts. John David Ashton was an American actor best known for his memorable roles in popular films during the 1980s and 1990s. Born on February 22, 1948, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Ashton became a well-recognized figure in Hollywood due to his rugged charm and versatile acting style. He gained widespread fame for his portrayal of Sergeant John Taggart in the Beverly Hills Cop films, a role that made him a household name. Ashton was equally known for his performances in other notable films such as Some Kind of Wonderful 1987 and Midnight Run 1988, both of which solidified his status as a talented character actor actor. Ashton's acting career spanned several decades, during which he appeared in numerous films and television shows. Some of his top movies include Beverly Hills Cop 1984, his role as the straight-laced sergeant. Taggart, alongside Eddie Murphy, became iconic. Beverly Hills Cop I, I 1987, he reprised his role in the sequel further endearing himself to fans of the action comedy franchise. Midnight Run 1988 Ashton starred as Marvin Dorfler, a bounty hunter in this critically acclaimed action comedy film. Some Kind of Wonderful 1987 Ashton played the protective father of Eric Stoltz's character in this John Hughes film. In his personal life, Ashton was married twice, first to Victoria Marie Run from 1968 to 1970, and later to Bridget Ashton from 1976 to 2001, with whom he had two children. He passed away on September 26, 2024, at the age of 76 in Fort Collins, Colorado. His legacy as a talented actor with a gift for comedic timing and drama lives on through his memorable film roles. In Tom Selleck, the iconic American actor known for his roles in Magnum P.I. Friends in numerous films, has recently faced some concerning health issues that have raised alarms among his fans and the entertainment community. Born on January 29, 1945, Selleck's charismatic presence and distinctive mustache made him a household name especially during his time as private investigator Thomas Magnum in the popular television series Magnum P.I. 
which originally aired from 1980 to 1988. In 2024, reports surfaced regarding Selleck's health, indicating that he has been dealing with significant challenges. Sources close to the actor revealed that he has been experiencing complications related to a chronic health condition. While specific details have been kept private, it has been noted that the actor's well-being has been a source of concern, prompting speculation about his ability to continue working in the entertainment industry. Despite these challenges, Selleck has shown resilience and determination throughout his career. He remains active in the industry, reprising his role as police chief Frank Reagan in the long-running CBS series Blue Bloods, a show that has garnered a dedicated fan base. However, recent episodes have raised questions about his character's physicality, as some scenes suggest he may not be as spry as he once was. While Selleck's health issues have cast a shadow over his legendary career, his enduring legacy as one of Hollywood's most beloved actors continues to resonate with audiences worldwide. Fans have taken to social media to express their support and love for the actor, hoping for his recovery and continued presence in the entertainment landscape. As 2024 progresses, many remain hopeful that Selleck will overcome these challenges allowing him to inspire and entertain audiences for years to come.